Hyundai has dominated the mid-size SUV segment with the Creta, but they haven't had as much luck with the sedan side of things. Here's five reasons why the new Verna might change that for them. Reason number one, the platform. The new Verna is based on the K2 platform, which is the same platform as its elder brother, the Elantra. Because of this platform, the car is now longer and wider than before and this has freed up a lot of space on the inside. So you now have a 480 litre boot and you get an additional 40 millimeters of legroom in the rear seat. This however has not changed the wheelbase of the car, it remains unchanged. The iteration of the fluidic design philosophy in this car is actually quite matured and I honestly quite like it. In the front you have this bold cascading grille, you also now get cornering lamps an electric sunroof, you have LED tail lamps, chunky 16-inch tires. That being said, however, I'm not the biggest fan of the design when it comes to the rear three-fourths of the car. I feel that the high waistline makes the design look a little bit disproportionate towards the back. Next up, we have safety. Now, this has been at the helm with the new Verna. So what you get standard across the range is dual airbags with ABS and EBD, ISOFIX mounts, and 50% of the body structure is made from advanced high-strength steel. Now, this top-end model that we have here comes with six airbags, and it also has a host of passive safety features like impact sensing door unlock and auto pinch function on the driver side window. Now, when it comes to features, the new Verna is packing big guns. On the infotainment side of things, we have sound designed by Archimus, so it sounds really nice. And this infotainment unit itself, in my opinion, is the best in this segment by a huge margin. The UI is nice and clean and easy to use. You also get Apple CarPlay with Android Auto. Next up, these ventilated seats. Now, this is a first-in-class feature, and we've seen these seats before on the Elantra, and with hot, humid climate like this here in Kochi, it, I'm so glad to have this. In addition to that, you get a rear AC vents, you get a smart trunk, and my favorite feature of all is Hyundai's new Telemetrix app. It gives you a whole host of driving information that changes the way you think about driving this car and makes it a lot more engaging and rewards you for eco driving as well. There's only one thing left to do is to find out how the new Verna drives. All right, now coming to the performance of the new Verna. Well, unfortunately, today we only get to drive one variant, which is the 1.6 diesel. We will test out the petrol on a future date. Now, this 1.6 diesel produces 127 bhp, 216 newton meters of torque, and peak torque comes in from as low as 1500 rpm. So you get a great spread of torque, and that is mated to this new six-speed manual gearbox, which is an absolute peach of a gearbox to use. It slots in nicely. The throws are just the right amount and it feels really good to hold in your hand as well. Now this was one of the biggest complaints with the previous generation Verna that it just didn't handle really well and felt very skittish especially at higher speeds. To start off with they have weighted up the steering of the car so it now feels a lot more sure-footed in the corners. It isn't as light as it was before but it just feels well more planted. In addition to that, to the suspension, you still get McPherson's in the front, copper torsion beam axles in the back. However, they have added a hydraulic rebound stopper and have uh, added vertical shocks and chains of steering geometry altogether. So now in the rear, the suspension is actually quite a lot more stiffer. This has helped with the handling of the car. The car feels more sure-footed in the corners for sure. However, the drawback of that is, well, it isn't as plush as it was before. In fact, the car feels fairly stiff. And that is not a word I would ever thought I would have used to describe a Hyundai car. Even though the car drives really well, what doesn't do justice to the entire driving experience to me are the brakes. I feel like this is the weakest part of the entire driving experience of the car. The brakes lack that initial bite, there isn't a lot of progression and it also exposes the weight of the car. You can tell that this is a fairly heavy car and coincidentally Hyundai have been silent on that front and they aren't revealing the exact weight of the all new Verna. Now that being said, the sense of refinement driving the new Verna is none. There is no other car in this segment. Again, I'm sticking out my neck a little bit by saying this, but I believe it's true that there's no other car in the segment that is as refined as the new one. And this is what Hyundai does really well. Make extremely refined cars. Yeah, they can be a little bit numb and not as engaging to drive. The sense of refinement in the car is incredible. Hyundai tell us that they have used uh, a lot of premium materials with the advanced high strength steel, a lot of foam fillers to keep the NDH levels in check. In fact, they say that it's a lot more improved by over 60% than the previous generation. And I'm inclined to believe that. Coupled with the Archimist sound system and the ventilated seats, it is 
a very relaxing drive. Now, the fifth reason why this car could be a game changer for Hyundai is the pricing. Now, Hyundai have gone extremely aggressive with it. The range starts from 7.99 lakhs and this model here, the top-end trim, costs 12.4 lakhs. Now, if you compare it to its competition, namely the Sias and the City, the top-end trim of the Hyundai Verna is about a lakh rupees more expensive than the Sias and a lakh rupees cheaper than the top-end trim of the Honda City. But think about what you're getting here for a moment. The Verna comes with the most powerful engines, it's definitely the most refined car to drive and offers the most amount of features by quite a margin. And at this price point, I think it offers exceptional value. What would you choose if you were to put your money in a car that is a mid-size sedan? Would you choose the City, the Sias or the new Verna? Well, you can let us know in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching this quick first impressions video of the new Verna. We're going to come back to you with a full-blown comprehensive review of the car. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.